<laughs> Viva La Vegan! Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and joining me today from California, I have Michelle Davis and Matt Holloway from Thug Kitchen. How are you both? You're doing great, how are you? Doing great. You have a cute cat that just walked behind you. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> it's a new house sit, so they're not actually mine all the time, but yeah, I'm looking after them at the moment. Uh, but you score, that's a was, great roommate. Was that the black, the black one or the white and black one? The black one. Okay, you might get two. <laughs> Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Thug Kitchen, this started as a, a vegan cooking blog or a Tumblr. Um, I love Tumblr, it's a great thing. And um, then what, did you start in Tumblr and then you made it into a website? Yeah, we were on Tumblr up until like right before our book dropped. Um, you know, we started it for fun and Tumblr's free. Mm -hmm. So that's, <laughs> that's how that happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we moved over to a, a more involved site right before the book dropped because we wanted it to be like searchable and have an index and just be a little bit more user friendly. And um, if you haven't heard of Thug Kitchen, you can have a look at their website, thugkitchen.com. They're also on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. And you're only a few years old. You started, what, in 2012, the end of 2012? Yep. What made you yeah, decide? Yeah, uh, summer 2012. Yeah, and what made you decide to start? Um, you know, I've, I've been vegan for 11 years, and when I met Matt about four years ago, uh, he was eating, like, shit. And, um, not actual shit. Yeah, not actual shit, but pretty fucking close. That's a whole uh, like, different video. Just, yeah. Uh, I don't think his fridge, it was just embarrassing. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to get him more into cooking for himself and cooking at home and eating more vegetables. So I was showing him other healthy eating blogs, and he just wasn't into it. Yeah, uh, I found myself having a hard time relating to other blogs because you know like in all the photos like in the background they have this giant house and uh, everything just so like picturesque and perfect yeah and, and our like, lives were not perfect yeah, like, like, <laughs> no one working. is are they <laughs> yeah, yeah we're both working like two jobs you know trying to make rent yeah you know? and so we wanted to make a healthy eating site that was relatable and didn't take itself so fucking seriously um, and would be something that we wanted to read and it was a great project for me to work on my recipes. Yeah, and I could do my photography. Like, yeah. it was just a hobby. I've never been in, like, printed or anything like that. And so. it definitely got him eating better. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. When you're more involved with the process, I guess, hey, that helps. You're yeah. Taking, oh, yeah. You're taking the photographs. You're, you know, part of the cre – are you part of the creation with Michelle? Like, I know, Michelle, you do the recipe – development and you write most of the stuff and Matt you mainly do the photography does it yeah we write everything over? together and it's really collaborative um, and with the recipes yeah I I come up with them but I, I workshop it with Matt yeah. and it's really great since I'm such a big cook and have been vegan for so long it's great to have somebody who is new yeah. and not such an experienced cook so I come up with a recipe I test into the ground and I give it to Matt She's, she's being polite. I'm kind of an idiot. <laughs> so, like, if Michelle can, like, come up with a recipe and she sends it to me and I can cook it and, like, not fuck it up, then we're, like, cool. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're yeah. good. Like, then, then we put it up on the site. Then other people can do it for yeah. sure. So, anyone will be able to do it. Is that the ethos? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm an idiot. And if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Just. So, it's really, it's really collaborative. We work on everything together. That's great. And how do you find working together? Are you, do you inspire each other all the time? Do you get annoyed at each other or is it good? Yes and yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you're, Michelle's like my favorite person to be around, you yeah. know? And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, that's where a lot of the, the silliness and fun comes from is just kind of like fucking around with each other. Yeah, and we like to make each other laugh. So if uh, if something that one of us comes up with makes the other one laugh, like we put that on the side too. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's a really good gauge, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If we don't think it's funny, it does not go up. Well. Yeah. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. um, when you first launched your Tumblr and the website, you were both anonymous. Is there a reason yeah. for that? Not really. I'm, I'm a private person. Like I've never had any um, Facebook account, MySpace, Twitter, any of that. So it didn't occur to me to put my photo and my name mentioned on it because I don't roll like that online. Like I'm anonymous on everything. I'm anonymous commenter, like always. Um, 
I think one of the things that I found about all the other like cooking blogs and websites is that it's so oversaturated with the personality of the author. Yeah, that's true. Too. That we were like, nah, fuck that. Like, let's just like, there is no author. You know, it's just like this. Like, I don't know. And, and people took to that because if you see on our social media back when we originally created it to today, when we post a recipe, people will send it to the, their uncle or their roommate or their cousin, and they're like, "Dude, this sounds like you." Yeah, you, know? you write this. Um, and, yeah. and that's cool because it kind of it empowers the the reader to be like oh I could do this yeah like and, I'm that badass in the kitchen right um, you know and we we were super happy to come out because we're really proud of the book but you're never gonna see our photos up on the site or like anything like that because it's not it's not it's not the Matt Michelle show yeah yeah okay. <laughs> that's that's a hard thing isn't it um like I know I've been doing my website Viva La Vegan for ten years this year actually yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's um, I was sort of thinking, how do you remove yourself from certain things? Like it's been quite a challenge to work out what could other people do, what do I have to do, what do people associate <laughs> with the brand, which is well, mostly yeah. me. So I guess you two have set it up for yourselves that it doesn't necessarily have to be you two that run it, which is really a really good way to do it from a business perspective yeah. and a marketing perspective, if nothing else. <laughs> But yeah, like we're just not really like glamorous, exciting people. So you know, it's <laughs> it's we're pretty, we're pretty fucking dull. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't want to see me in my sweatpants all day. Like it's. No. <laughs> and why did you both become vegan in the first place, Michelle? You said you've been vegan for eleven years. Yeah, um, I was vegetarian since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole family eats meat. I was just that kid, you know. <laughs> um, I I couldn't separate the animal protagonist in children's movies with what was on my plate. Um, but my family could barely hang with me being vegetarian. So <laughs> not that anyone can relate to that, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so I, I went vegan when I left the house. Um, and, you know, as I've got older, the health aspect of it has definitely come more into play. Yep. Uh, but it definitely went vegan for the animals. Um, and, you know, that all the health benefits I feel personally um, – have kept me vegan and I just feel really good about what's on my plate and it's really helped my relationship with food. Cool. Um, you, Matt? Yeah, and I've, I've been vegan for about two years. Um, I was two years vegetarian before that around the time that Michelle and I met. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've worked in animal shelters and, like, you know, it's always been about the welfare of the animals and I, I think that there's that weird switch, like Ms. Michelle said, when you know where your food comes from mm-hmm. but, like, you're going to eat it anyways. Yep that I always kind of had a hard time with, but not until I kind of got out in the college and out in the real world that I was like, yeah, like maybe I should start trying to take care of myself and cook for myself and, and give a shit about what I put in my body. Mm. And then that can be tough as a, as a dude because if you do that around other guys, you get ragged on for it. You know, if you eat a salad at a barbecue and you're a dude, like you're going to get made fun of. Yeah. yeah, and so we wanted to show people like, it, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> You can eat a goddamn salad and you don't have to say you're sorry. And you don't, to be vegan, you don't have to be like this hippie that lives on a commune who has no sense of humor. Like, you can be a normal person with a sense of humor who likes to have a good time, but who also gives a shit about animals, the planet, and yourself. Yeah. I think we still have that hippie tag for veganism yep. like i don't know when that's going to go away but so many... <laughs> yeah and that's a fine thing to be but that's not the only way to be vegan no. i don't, I don't really know? know that many people who are hippies like i have a heap of vegan friends all over the world yeah. and i would say maybe one percent of them are hippies like i don't understand yeah. where that stereotype comes from anymore yeah no they definitely i we're, we're working to try to change it, but yeah, we want we want to show people that yeah, being vegan, like I've been vegan for eleven years, like you can be fucking normal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I think yeah, you're right. There is this weird like um, stigma with like being vegan, but it's like no, like maybe I'm just like a dude who happens to be vegan mm. before and before anything else. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, exactly. And so you yeah. both of you speak about animals and animal welfare, but your blogs. Mm-hmm primarily food focused. Do you do anything mm-hmm. in relation to animal activism or any information about animals? Do you feel that's important? Um, we do in our private lives, yep. but not on the blog yet. Um, you know, we like to kind of keep a tight focus because if you if you shoot too wide, people get bogged down. Um, but I think we're slowly kind of getting there with people. 
um, in some of like the tweets we retweet and things like that, we're trying to get a little bit more focused on animals. But yeah, we don't want to cast too wide of a net and uh, get get shit all mixed up. <laughs> but our private lives, for sure. Yeah, in our private lives, yeah, we've we've worked at animal shelters and food banks, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. And so um, you live in California. What what area? <laughs> Um, we live in LA. Okay. Um, I grew up in the Bay Area, though. Yeah, and I'm from the south side of Houston. Okay. So, so a yeah. lot of vegan options where you live, isn't there? Oh yeah. My <laughs> yeah, being, being like Tex- Texan and moving to California and becoming vegan. I mean, my friends and family back home think I'm like the biggest fucking hippie, <laughs> and I'm like, not really, not that much has changed other than location and diet. I'm still the same dude. But yeah, it, you know. Being vegan in a lot of places, like I, I've lived other places other than uh, the Bay Area in LA, and it can be really hard because you don't have the convenience foods that we have access to in such a big city like LA. Um, and that's part of the reason, you know, again, why I was such a big cook is I had I lived places where I had to cook every single thing myself. Um, but yeah, people who say they can't be vegan and they live in LA, <laughs> like. They haven't fucking tried. <laughs> or people in New York say that, or even in Australia, people in Melbourne or Sydney, even Brisbane where I am and the Gold Coast, which is pretty close to me. There's just so many options now. Definitely if you're in the middle of like farming or agriculture land in the middle of nowhere, I definitely can understand that more so. But if you're in a city or near a city, no. Need a new excuse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we don't want to hear it. <laughs> we don't want to hear it. So yeah. you, you've um, both uh, released a book, and it's called Thug Kitchen, Eat Like You Give a Fuck. Now, um, how long did it take for you to create that? The blog, or the book? The book, yeah. Or the slogan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, the, book, <laughs> the book we started working on um, in the summer of 2013. So it took us about a year and a half to when it came out, mm-hmm. um, and that was like we never, every hour of every day. Like that was still a really tight turnaround. We had never done anything like that. Like we were coming off of our, our day jobs, you know, and like yeah, I worked at a grocery store uh, for eight years. Yeah, and I I worked as like an assistant. I was in a mailroom before that, and like worked at a restaurant before that. So so we yeah. really didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so like working on a book is like this huge project and it's kind of intimidating because you're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, yeah. like it, it was a huge learning process and it was exciting. And, and yeah, we had a really great publisher too who really trusted us, yeah. um, you know, and let us write, eat like you give a fuck on the cover yeah. and uh, a really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a really great team of people who supported us and kind of guided us through it. And there's no way we could have done it without the help from our publisher. Yeah. And so when, you, when you're when doing the recipes, were they the favorites that everyone liked on your blog or were they all new recipes? Like most of them, are, like 95% of them brand new. Yeah, and um, we put like three or four favorites from the blog, but there's about 100 recipes in there. Right. So it's a, a large majority of brand new stuff. It was favorites for us that we put in the yeah. blog and, you know, stuff I've been cooking for years since okay. college or growing up. Um, you know, things I'd make for friends when they came over. It's a lot of recipes like that. Yeah, um, a hundred recipes. Keep... That's great. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, we, I know I'm a big food blog reader, um, and I hate when I get the person's book, and I'm like, oh, you printed out your fucking blog, <laughs> and I paid $20 for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. So we wanted people, yeah, we wanted people to get a good value for their money, so. And you did all the photography, Matt? Is there a photo for each I recipe? Did. I did. I didn't know I was going to. Um, it was kind of. <laughs> we, I think we were having. Yeah, well, we were having like a, a conversation early on with the publisher about like um, the layout and, and the artwork, and they were like, "Oh, well, like Matt, you can photograph it." And I was like, "Oh, I don't. I no. Like, I'm an amateur. Like, I've never been. I can't do shit like that." And um, yeah, no, I all everything in there is mine, and it was um, crazy, and it's scary to think about, but. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's I grew a lot as a photographer, and I started meeting other people who do food photography, and yeah, I got into it. So it's it's good that someone else saw how talented you are and gave you that help to to be able to do something like that. That's always good from other people. Oh, oh and, yeah, and he's gotten so good at it. Like we'll go back and like look at our early photos, and 
you know, we thought they were great at the beginning too, but now we look back and we're like, oh, look at how he's grown. Like he's killing it. Um, yeah. So I, I would say like the first year we ran the site, everything was like on, well, on one table. It was on our, <laughs> it was on our coffee table, which was next to a window. <laughs> And like our 400 square foot apartment. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the same fucking photo every time. Yeah. Yeah, it was either overhead or from the side, but it was like the same fucking back. Like different yeah. bowls. Yeah. But not really. Yeah. Um, but I, for the book, I think like 60 or 70% of the recipes have photos. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's, um, it's yeah. very important to have a lot of photos in books, isn't it? Yeah. Well, especially, I, you know, I taught myself how to cook and, um, looking at the photos was such an important aspect mm. of that. Um, and we want people to feel like they did a good job. And so our food photos, and that's the food as it's coming out of my pan. Yeah. 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 None of our stuff is like artificial. It's not shellacked. It's not yeah. waxed. Like it's, it is the food that we do right off the stove that's and we put it underneath the camera and we photograph it. Mm. And um, yeah, it's, it, it's encouraging when you make it at home and you're like, it looks like the book. <laughs> so we want, you know, we want the photos to be beautiful, but it's also important for them to be relatable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so I just wanted to talk about when you released your video um, trailer for the book. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of controversy that happened because of this, because as we mentioned before, your blog was anonymous, your Tumblr was anonymous. No one knew who you were. Um, and in our friends knew. <laughs> I said our friends knew. <laughs> oh, your friends knew. And um, a lot of people saw two white people from California mm-hmm. that they found out later that were speaking in, and I quote, a vulgar, hyper masculine, snarky, and arrogant way on your blog. How did you mm-hmm. feel about this? This is pretty, pretty intense. Uh, I mean, kind of surprised. I was like, I don't know, like, I, yeah, we've read some of, like, the bad press about us, and I'm like... Yeah, we got a Google alert. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like, I would probably fucking hate those people, too, but that's not us. Like, yeah, you know, a lot of them said, like, we live in Hollywood, and that we're rich, and all this shit, and I was like, well, yeah, those people suck, but, like, what... I don't know why I have a bus pass. Yeah, like, why, why was I working in a grocery store for eight years? Was I volunteering? Like, yeah. No, like, <laughs> I was working to pay rent, like, you know, so but we, we get it, um, but leaving the blog anonymous, we did give people the opportunity to picture whomever they wanted, yeah. um, and for a lot of people, that that wasn't us, and it definitely wasn't a girl, no. um, and we still get that shit all the time, like, you'll see every post we do, they'll be like, ha he's so funny, and da 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 like, it's like, uh, like, yeah. I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> really sucks. Yeah, so people are going to read it in whatever voice is in their head, you know, because we're not in your face with um, who we are, but the way we write the site is, you know, definitely a version of how we talk to each other, and we swear a bunch in real life. Um, so we're fine with it, and it makes good sense to people who know us in real life. Yeah. When you read the blog, you can definitely hear us, but yeah. Um, yeah, leaving it anonymous definitely gave people the opportunity to kind of picture whoever they wanted. Yeah. And I mean, which is a positive and then a, a little bit of a negative, but our response was overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, yeah, for the most part, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, we went on tour and, you know, people have asked us about the controversy and, you know, we're like, hey, we're, we're excited that people are talking about yeah. the assumptions you make when you think about things like food and, and health and accessibility. We should challenge those things. You know, that's a healthy conversation to have. It's unfortunate that it takes something like this to start that, but. We're glad people are talking. And definitely, that that's very true. Like, it's good to start the conversation. It's good to have these these questions come up. And I also think um, in one of my podcasts just recently, I was, we were talking about outrage and how people, mm. just not in the vegan movement, but just in general, especially on the internet, everyone is so... Yeah outraged about everything and maybe like we need to think about our the way we communicate with people or try to make our communication a bit better because this could have been a really great way to actually have a conversation about you know black lives matter or why are people assuming the way you talk is you know related to black 
black people or the thug life and all that sort of stuff and I guess you probably didn't time it that well with all the killings and all the horrible stuff well, that's been happening in America. We weren't, we weren't really trying to time anything, like it just, you know, yeah, things... It, yeah, the timing could have been better and I think for a lot of people, um, especially people who took issue with it, it was the first time they had heard about it so it did seem like we had written this book somehow overnight, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it had been around for a long time and um, we, you know, we don't run ads on our site and uh, anything like that so we just wish that uh, some of the people who were taking issue with it had clicked over and actually kind of looked at the site and looked at our shed because I think if you spent more than a minute on our site you would get a better context and kind of see what we were actually doing versus what people were telling you we were doing. Yeah, I mean... But yeah, you have to actively choose to support us by buying our book or buying our merch. Like, we don't make passive money off of people, so... Yeah, and um, to what you were saying earlier, I think that it's interesting when, yeah, people on the internet, they do have this sort of knee-jerk reaction when they hear something before they know a lot about it. And um, yeah, we heard a good term uh, called faux offendedness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, I get I get that people are upset about shit. You know, people are upset about. There's plenty to be yeah. fucking upset yeah. about, especially yeah. in the United States right now. But I think that the um, reaction should be proportionate. Um, yeah. You know, when something gets really blown out of context and there's this um, huge reaction, uh, you know, it's. It can be kind of chaotic, you know, and and you don't. Well, and, then, and real good points and like a constructive dialogue gets lost in like a shouting match, and yeah. it, it shouldn't be like that. We should all be working on being better listeners mm. um, and just better communicators and being kinder to one another. Yeah, uh, you know, you you just read people getting fucking dragged on the internet. And you know that person has like a family. They got a fucking, <laughs> they got a fucking job. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, you know, just think, get all the information is all. Yeah. But yeah, the internet is like we. Use, I mean, we still get a ton of shit for swearing. Um, yeah, I mean, being vegan. Like yeah. <laughs> that, that that controversy is not the only like time people have been like, dude, fuck y'all. Yeah. It's been about the swearing. It's been about not using me. I mean, mm -hmm. we have gotten so much shit since from we, day we one. We use a lot of cilantro and the cilantro haters out there, that's a strong portion oh, of people. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, we get a lot of emails about cilantro. <laughs> we call it coriander over here, but yeah, you either yeah, love I, or hate like, it, don't you? Like, there's no in between. I love it. <laughs> yeah, same, yeah. same, obviously. Yeah, no apologies, but like, <laughs> hot damn. Like, but I guess, you know, also for me, the the what's sort of portrayed in the media in particular from a vegan perspective is mostly white middle class people who are yeah. vegan or even people who have higher incomes that can afford all these different things that people say you need to be able to make vegan food. Whether it's yeah. like, you know, in Australia here we get stuff shipped from the UK and the US that's like twice the price that you would pay normally in America for this, those sort of vegan alternatives. You don't need that. Yeah. You know, I think we need to bring it back to the basics. And I think that's, you know, what you two sort of focus on is easy to prepare basic sort of food but make it a bit a bit different and yum. Yeah, and it's... It was always really, I felt really left out of a lot of vegan stuff all the time because, you know, they would, uh, they blog about, you know, the newest product this and newest that and like I couldn't afford it. Like when I was working at the grocery store, I'm, I was making at most $25,000 a year in the United States, which is, especially living in LA, that's no fucking money. No. Yeah. And so I didn't have any wiggle room to try all the hot new stuff. Like I had to pinch my pennies to get coconut oil. Like. Yeah. So yeah, and I, I mean, think it discourages a lot of people yeah. when you use too many exotic ingredients or like the latest, hottest thing. It's like, what if bell peppers are cool? Like, don't overthink it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, and like I said, you know, earlier, like reading an ingredient that's on someone's website like that, I'll just get to that one ingredient. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm sure it's expensive. I got $8 to eat tonight. You know, like... And well, yeah, and if you have a recipe that calls for four cups of cashews, the cashews are expensive. Uh, like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. Um, and I know that would always discourage me. And, yeah, you're right that so many of the vegan blogs and healthy eating blogs in general, the people appear to have a disposable income. Yeah. 
Um, and most of us don't. Yeah. yeah. And that's a huge turn off. Yeah. Definitely. And so um, talking about money, Australia is actually quite a um, expensive place to live <laughs> and um, <laughs> to travel to. And you're both coming over here very soon. You're yes. here this weekend. Yes, yes. we are really, really excited. We have got to do a lot of international travel in our lives. Yeah, we, I mean, we go, we go from like working these like shitty day jobs to pay like nothing. We're, we're barely making rent to like touring for our book for Australia is just so night and day for us yeah. that we're like, this is crazy. Uh, yeah, I keep waiting for somebody to be like, no, nah, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and that's cool. Like, all right, I'm going to go back to the grocery store and get my day job back. Yeah, like, but it, yeah, we're so, so grateful for the opportunity. And yeah, we just keep pinching ourselves because yeah, this was, I mean, even four years ago, this wasn't something in the realm of possibilities that could have happened to us so yeah it, we're every single day we're freaking out yeah. and and you're coming over to australia you're um, going to be at the melbourne vegan festival that's on saturday the 21st of march that's going to be held at the corner hotel in richmond if you're in melbourne and you want to go um check out corner hotel for cornerhotel.com for the tickets and their yes. facebook page for more if you want to go to the Sydney Vegan Festival, which is on Sunday the 22nd, that's at the Factory Theatre at Marrickville, and you can see sydneyveganfestival.com or their Facebook for schedules and tickets. And what are you two mm -hmm. doing at these events? I think we're going to talk about, like, you know, our journey from, you know, having a shit diet to being a vegan cookbook author, mm -hmm. um, because... There, four years ago, Matt drinking Mountain Dew and eating frozen pizza to being a vegan cookbook author would never fucking happen. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and we, we want to give people a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff and kind of like the day-to-day -day of what it looks like to run a food blog yeah. and what it takes to write a cookbook, especially in the short time that we did, and just how the photo you see when you actually pull back, like how... <laughs> not awesome everything else looks. Yeah. <laughs> so we it's have like our tiny ass apartment you can see everything we own Matt's like, dog's face like just right like the taquitos <laughs> are here her face is just right here um yes yeah, so we want to give people just kind of just more information about us and the blog and just like kind of what it looks like to run a food blog um we're not doing a cooking demo because those are boring and you don't learn anything and there's a lot of people going and we're not making enough for everybody so like <laughs> cooking, cooking demos are fucking tease because they do that and they don't give you like a recipe card and then you're like yeah. and you don't get a sample yeah you're like are you gonna feed all 300 of us now yeah. like, no. <laughs> so we're just gonna do like an entertaining talk and like a Q&A and then we're gonna be hanging out so yeah. if people want to come up and talk about whatever like we're totally down and um your book is that available for sale in Australia Yes, it is. it is. Yes, um, online and in brick and mortar stores. Okay, and also, where else can people get the book? On thugkitchen.com, obviously, and where else overseas? Australia, uh, Amazon UK, and it's, it's Amazon pretty, Australia. Yeah. Like we have, a, if you go to our um, website, it has um, a breakdown of all the links where you can. Find and we have it broken down by um, like Australia. No um, territory. Detroit. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there's a couple links up there, but yeah, you can find it, and. Uh, I, we're going to be signing books and everything at the festival too, so. Oh, good. So there'll be books for sale at the festival? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there should be. And, and a lot of people always want to just, can you just write fuck on like, <laughs> like yeah, sure, I'm just signing. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, you, it's, it's easy to find. And um, we have a merch store too on our website and we ship to Australia. Yep. And what do you sell on the merch store? Uh, right now, I think we just have a couple of shirts. We're like, yeah, hold on. Yeah. We're sitting in our empty office. We have like, like this is lawn furniture. We're sitting on. <laughs> um, yeah, we sell like t-shirts and stuff, um, and we fill the orders ourselves and mail it to you, and we ship to Australia. So if you anybody out there wants any, um, we're we're happy to mail it out. <laughs> That's great. And what are you looking forward to doing when you're in Australia? Have you been before? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't, I'm so excited to come to Australia. Like, yeah, I, I really want to eat. Yeah. Just food. a lot of food. So if anybody has great restaurant recommendations, tweet them at us because um, I will be bringing my sweatpants and I mean business. Like, <laughs> make the most of it. 
<laughs> yes, 100%, 100%. In Melbourne, that's like our vegan mecca of Australia. So there's lots and lots of places. There's a, a place called Fitzroy or, or even Brunswick. They're pretty close to each other in the inner city. And if you just hang out there, just walk down some of the main streets, there'll be vegan places like every few every few oh, um, nice. shops. So, or vegetarian if not vegan. So there's lots um, of options. And then Sydney also has quite a few options as well. And are they the only places you're going to this time? You're yeah, they're the only, yeah, only places. Okay. Um, but we'll, I, we'll be in a food coma by the end of it, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I hope you both enjoy your time here and good luck with the festivals over the weekend. And thank you oh. so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. No problem. And make sure you check out thugkitchen.com for more information. And you can also check out Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram for more information. Make sure you see vivalavegan.net for more interviews with inspiring vegans. Thank you. Thank you.